Cold weather backpacking can be an extreme challenge for a lot of people, and it's important to have the right gear, have the right skill set in order to have a good time, to be enjoying yourself. I'm currently in West Virginia, and I'm on a backpacking trip, and it is mid-January, so it is cold and wintry out here, despite the fact that you see no snow. So I wanted to run you guys through my new gear setup that I've got going on here, because I think that there are some tips that you can pick up from what I'm using, and uh, also some little pieces of gear that really make the camp experience a lot more comfortable and a lot more fun. So uh, let's break it down, starting now. Okay, so first things first, I started using this uh, winter backpacking tent. And this is a one person tent. This is the Access One from MSR. And I have had a winter tent before, but it was really very much like an expedition tent. It was bulky, it was super, super heavy. It was a two person tent that weighed 10 pounds. And that's just not realistic for backpacking. This tent is new to me. I've used it now a couple of times. It has made a big difference because it weighs three pounds. So it's much more in line with like a real backpacking tent. Couple of the main differences are that it doesn't have a lot of the mesh. So this mesh right here is all you got for this kind of three season style mesh. And that's really for ventilation here. The rest of this, this white fabric, it's a little bit thicker, a little bit less breathable. What that's gonna do is it's gonna keep the warmth in. So it got down into the low 20s last night and it was really pleasant inside. So that was awesome. The temperature differential between the inside of the tent and outside of the tent was extreme. It was much more comfortable in here. So last night wasn't the most extreme by any stretch of the imagination but uh, it was still cold. Let's dive down into the tent and see what's going on in here. One of the downsides of this tent, the access from MSR, is the moisture management. Now, moisture control in the winter is just tough. So you have these more enclosed environments and you're breathing out a lot of moisture in your breath. And what I've noticed is that this got pretty wet. Now, it did. I did have one of my vents open. I didn't have a second vent open and I probably should have had both vents all the way open last night. I think that would have decreased the amount of moisture buildup that was in here. It didn't come down to being a bad experience. It didn't pool up. So in that sense, it was pretty good, but you can see up here, I think maybe still some moisture hanging on, uh, clinging to the tent. It was a little bit damp in here this morning. So that was, a little bit of a knock to uh, this system, but it is a one person tent. It's a much more confined enclosed space. But uh, so far I'd say that the ventilation on this tent is fine, but not superb. This is the uh, Parsec zero degree Fahrenheit sleeping bag from Thermarest. Ha ha! It's kind of extreme yellow and orange um, from the, the outer colors here. So this zero degree sleeping bag is a great sleeping bag for general, winter camping when you don't need the the protection from like polar elements or ex really extreme mountaineering kind of winter sleeping bags. The biggest thing that I think that was was really fun here is my camping mattress. So this is a R5 rated sleeping mattress from Zen Bivy and the biggest thing that I love about it is that it is 25 inches wide and 77 inches long. And if you're familiar with other camping mattresses, this, the standard is 20 inches wide by 72 inches long. And having the extra five inches of length and five inches of width is so, so nice. It gives me a really pleasant platform for sleeping on. So what's gonna happen is that means that my toes aren't falling off the end of the sleeping mattress, touching that cold ground, where my toes get freezing cold because they're on that cold ground. And I'm not just laying like a stiff mummy because I'm afraid of rolling off the edges of my sleeping mattress. The last few years I've transitioned away from the 20 inch wide mattresses and it's one of the biggest changes I've made in my backpacking gear setup over the years. So adding that in really is wonderful and I highly recommend it. The Zen Bivy sleeping mattress at R5, it's not technically a true winter mattress, but it was plenty. Uh, one, it wasn't very cold last night, only down into the low 20s. 
So that's not extreme. But I think that R5 value, it's pretty much the standard of what you need for um, kind of the minimum, I guess, for winter camping. So I wouldn't recommend going under five uh, for winter camping, but I literally never felt the cold of the ground at any point in the night. And sometimes with less robust mattresses, uh, you can start to feel it seep into the bottom of the bag. Because what happens is when you're compressing the down in the sleeping bag as you lay on it, it doesn't provide the same insulation that it does over the top of you. So you really need that sleeping mattress to be providing that R value uh, value to the bottom of your sleeping setup. So keeping you separated from the cold ground. Clothing and layering is a huge part of the equation when it comes to cold weather backpacking. And I've made a few adjustments to my layering system over the years and I wanna talk about them. This right here is my favorite mid-layer. This I believe is the Dawn Sherpa from Beyond Clothing. I need to check on that, uh, the name of it. But it's this really wonderful weighted, uh, perfect weighting for, for winter camping, uh, in my opinion. So it's just super pleasant. It's like this fleece kind of wool material. It's just super, super comfortable. I love being able to throw my hood up and it's super pleasant and obviously like this is really nice amount of warmth and I like sleeping with this thing and having this hood was so nice overnight. I really, really liked that. So having a the proper mid-weight layer is very important. These hiking pants have been some of my favorite hiking pants I've used in the last year, especially for colder weather temperatures. These are the Fialravin uh, I believe they are the Keb trousers, but they're super great. They have a nice thicker material, so they keep that warmth in. Uh, it's easier to hike in these without long johns on or an under, underneath layer uh, because you generate a little bit of that warmth and they have a ventilation system. You can ventilate the pants uh, as well when you're hiking because you really don't want to be sweating when you're backpacking in cold weather because developing that sweat it sticks in your layers and uh, it's hard for that moisture to go anywhere so avoiding sweating is big of course i need to talk about my new footwear and one of my favorite pieces of footwear really isn't like my hiking footwear but it's my down booties uh, these are from outdoor research i think they're like 80 bucks i love being able to walk around in these at night um, if it's really cold, I will actually sleep in these in my sleeping bag. They provide a nice little bit of extra warmth. I can get up, go to the bathroom at night without ever having to go through that process of putting my boots on or, you know, that's kind of annoying, kind of tedious. It keeps you from wanting to get up in the middle of the night and go pee, which by the way, if you're not getting up in the middle of the night to go pee, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're making it really hard for yourself to sleep. So I highly recommend you take that step. And if this helps you get out and go pee in the night, well, it's well worth that investment because it means good quality sleep. Whew. Why were there leaves there? <laughs> Having a good pair of boots is really, really important as well for winter camping. Keeping your feet dry, if it's snowy, if it's muddy, really being able to keep your feet dry is ultra important because your feet are so delicate, I would say and having them not turn into icicles, not feel, not lose your feeling, not feel icy cold, and of course not getting frostbite is very important. So I have been using these Akus, these are the Super Alp Gore-Tex, and winter boots can be a little pricey. These are over $300. So that can price people out for sure, I get it. But uh, if you're gonna be doing a lot of cold weather camping, I highly recommend investing in some sort of insulated boot uh, there are cheaper options out there on the market. I believe that the Vasque Cold Sparks that I've used in the past are in the $200 range, and those have been great as well. So being able to uh, save some money is very important, but having your feet be warm is of utmost importance in the backcountry in the winter. One of my favorite pieces of gear that I've added into my repertoire of late is insulated pants. Now I'm a big proponent of wearing things like long johns, of course, um, but this time I didn't bring long johns and I went fully over to my insulated pants and oh my goodness, they are so warm and wonderful. So these are from Outdoor Research, super comfortable texture. You can sleep in these in your sleeping bag. They're kind of like long johns, they're loose fitting, add a good bit of warmth. 
to your sleep system, to just being comfortable. I had these on under my pants. They were my underpants uh, around the campfire last night. And it made what would otherwise be a cold, tough experience into a much more pleasant experience. Well, I don't necessarily like or recommend hiking in a long johns or an insulated pants because of how much moisture can build up with sweat. Uh, these are awesome to throw on once you've gotten to camp, once you start to cool down, you're not doing that aerobic activity. These have been better than long johns. So they are a little bit bulkier to carry. They take up just a little bit more space than long johns, but the comfort level that comes with them is wonderful. These insulated pants are one of the biggest upgrades I've made to my cold weather camping repertoire over the last few years, and I definitely recommend it. The last piece of gear that has really helped is the stool that I'm sitting on. Now, I think that getting off the ground is really important when the temperatures are cold. So not sitting, even though there's not snow around, just not sitting on cold, damp, mossy ground or wet leaves, or of course, snow if that's around, you need to keep your body up off the snow because that cold ground will really, really sap a lot of your warmth uh, through your butt. Oops. Drop my headlamp. I've been using this uh, 360 degree swivel stool from Grand Trunk that has become one of my go-to favorites. It's lightweight, it weighs a pound, it costs 60 bucks. And to me, that is just really good value. Being off the ground is so important. It also puts you at a nice level for cooking or sitting around a campfire and things like that. So I definitely recommend if you're gonna be doing cold weather camping, it is kind of a luxury, but it goes such a long way into making a big difference in comfort. One of the things that I'm going to be upgrading to, I swear it's coming one of these days, is a chair with a back. And I think that uh, I'm finally ready to make the upgrade. So maybe the next video that you see from me, I'll actually have a chair that has back support. Because I do notice that after about two hours or an hour of sitting down in these stools, I really want to lean back against something. So that's coming, but uh, this is still a major upgrade over not having anything at all. Okay, that's my new cold weather backpacking setup. I hope this video helps you get backpacking and camping out when it's cold, because you don't need to hang up your boots. You don't need to hang up your backpack until spring. You can enjoy camping all year long. Okay, it's time for me to hike out of here. I've got more of West Virginia to explore, and uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed this one. So that's it for me. I'm Eric Hansen. I'll see you later.